not take second place, even to his service. You know, we get too busy sometimes. We get so busy serving him, we forget to love him. This is the greatest temptation of workers for the Lord, the greatest danger. For if you neglect your fellowship with the King of Kings because you're so busy with the affairs of the kingdom, it can be disastrous to your spiritual life and communion with the Lord. However sincere and faithful you are to his work, you must put him first. God, that is. Not the work, nor even others. Jesus comes first. He doesn't fit second place, and he won't take it. For I, the Lord, will have no other gods before me. That probably is the greatest mistake of sincere Christians, to make a god of God's service. Your feverish activity is nothing. Your service is nothing if you don't give the king your attention, your love, your time, your communion. He desires your love and for you to love him first of all and above all. You cannot do the master's work without the master's power and guidance. And to get it, you must spend time with the master. So help us, Lord, never to forget that the first place is for you and that we must drink of thee and thy spirit if we're going to have enough not only for ourselves, but also to overflow upon others.
help you in us, Lord. Every one of us is a hell of a mess. And if we don't keep our eyes on the Lord and our mind on his word, we're doomed to defeat, doubt, disillusionment, and final failure. When Peter started looking at himself, he started to sink. It was no use. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the only one that can keep you from falling. Hold on to his hand and don't look at the waves. Keep your eyes on Jesus. God knows you're anything but perfect and can't be perfect and never will be perfect. And usually, you're pretty much of a mess, like the rest of us. So the only question, the only standard is, do you depend on the Lord totally, trust Him and His grace and His love and His mercy, and give Him all the glory and all the credit? If there's anything good you ever do, do you give Him the glory? Do you say, thank Jesus, don't thank me, Thank the Lord. It's all the Lord. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who hath borne all our sins and hath cleansed every stain. Jesus. Hallelujah. So help us to keep our eyes on you, Jesus. Help us to keep our minds and our hearts and our faith stayed on you. In Jesus' name we ask for thy glory. You're the one who really does it all. And we're nothing. We just have to depend on you, Jesus. And we do, Lord. We do. chasing his subjects around, screaming and hollering at them, to try to get them to do what he wants. He isn't going to go chasing you around, trying to beat you over the head with a Bible to get you to listen. But you must come to him with quietness and respect, and sincerely and in trembling present your petition, and wait silently to get the answer. If you're in a room full of people and the TV is on, if they keep raising their voices and drowning out the TV, no matter how loud the volume is, you won't get what it has to say. And the Lord, unlike the TV, will just shut up if you don't listen. When Israel stopped listening to God and ceased believing what he had to say and quit doing what he commanded, he just stopped talking to them for nearly 300 years between the Testaments. God does not like to talk to either deaf, unbelieving, or unheeding ears. So, he just shuts up. But, if you seek the Lord, you will hear from the Lord and be led of the Lord. Seek more after the will of your King of Kings, and he will give you more understanding. He wants to be recognized. He wants you to know that you need him. So listen, seek the Lord, and hear from the Lord. Amen.
often rocks, obstacles, and logs that would stop us. Help us around them, Lord, or remove them. Vision. I see a stream flowing. It takes the path of least resistance and follows and takes the lowest level. We're all being swept along with God's mainstream. Some are in the lead, some hovering near the shore, and some clinging to the little rocks of their own personal stand on their own pet doctrines. But it's God's mighty river. Thou must flow with the current of my will and where I lead and avoid the rocks and the ledges and the protuberances and the roots that would ensnare and catch and stop. But thou must flow even as I have led David. God will make a way. He has promised. Where he guides, he always provides. And one of the ways to know the will of God is by the open door to take advantage of the doors which the Lord has already opened for you. You don't have to climb the banks or over the rocks. Just flow with it. Try to avoid the obstructions and follow the path of least resistance, going where there is the most receptivity, the most openness, always seeking the lowest level. Proceed steadily on, in spite of everything, following the refreshing river of God's will as you seek the driest places of the earth who need his life-giving waters of life. Just 
yield to him. show me. But I suppose if I got serious about it and really got desperate and needed to know or wanted to know bad enough, God would tell me. I could reveal unto thee the secrets of the universe. Only from thy creator canst thou comprehend the mysteries that I have made. And yet, trustest thou me not that I have taught thee? It's like he's a teacher, and he asks us questions, and tries to get us to think. The Lord likes to puzzle us sometimes, to make us really concentrate, and try to think, and figure things out. It makes us seek him more, and make a greater effort to get into the spirit, and try to get the answers. What wouldst thou know? Ask and it shall be given unto thee. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto thee. Lord, you have all the answers, and we know nothing except what you show us. All we have to do is ask. You promised we'd receive. We just knock, and the door is open to us, and we can look in and see what's in thy heart. If we really seek the answer, we find it. If thou shalt seek unto me the Lord thy God, it shall be revealed unto thee the mysteries of the kingdom of God. He himself will teach you and reveal to you the greatest of his secrets. and a fresh spirit 
out of nowhere and from nothing. See now how I have turned thee about and caused thee to awaken from slumber. I have turned thee by my spirit. For I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that believeth in me shall never die, but shall live to life and love and music and hope in a land with children that shall live forever in me and my house that I have gone to prepare for that which cannot die, but shall live forever. Thank you, Jesus. happens by accident to one of his children. I have found in my own life and that of many others that he always has a purpose for things, although it is not always revealed immediately. Everything is in his hands. Nothing happens without his will, especially to his child whom he loves and to whom he wants to be good and take care of. But God's ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. And he often works in a very mysterious way the wonders of his love to perform. And so often contrary to our natural expectations and desires. But praise the Lord anyhow. Thank you, Lord, that all things come of thee. All things work together for good to them that love thee. Thank you for what you've given us, Jesus. Lord, we know all these things are going your way, whatever way they're going, and that you're behind the scenes, and we know it's all in your hands, Lord, and you're in control. Fear not, therefore, that which shall come upon thee, for I shall turn it unto thy good, for I do all things well, and in me is no shadow of turning, and every good and perfect gift cometh down from above, and nothing shall dare touch thee except by my permission. sex, or any 
other fleshly characteristic. That's downright damnable devilish discrimination. For God looketh on the heart, not on the outward appearance. In the realm of the spirit, you're only a Christian. It doesn't matter what color you are, or what sex you are, or what social status you are, or what father you had. He is your father, and you're his son, and that's all that matters, because of Jesus. So to hell with all the rest of the differences, discriminations, and prejudices, the worldly, fleshly, satanic, nationalistic, divisive spirit, which has nearly destroyed the earth with its division and wars. Thank God we have been liberated from the narrow confines of carnal human boundaries and limitations into the glorious light and love of his salvation and the wonderful fellowship of the kingdom of God. We are not divided, all one body we, one in hope, one in doctrine, one in charity. Hallelujah. Thank God for the one true brotherhood. All glory be to Jesus. are fighting for us, battling the devils in a constant great war. And we're on God's side, the winning side that cannot lose. Thank the Lord for his angels that guard and protect us, his mighty defenders, one of which could handle all the arms of the enemy. Thank God for those who work with us within the veil and the fifth dimension, his heavenly spirits, his ministering spirits, his angels that help us all the time. We know, Lord, that thy angels encamp round about them that fear thee. But, Lord, help us not to give them a hard time. They try to counsel, guide, and influence us, but they don't make us do things. Only in the most extreme cases does God really step in and intervene. He usually leaves things up to our choice. So help us, Lord, to cooperate and follow the leading of thy Spirit and thy Holy Spirits to do what they know is best. Help us to follow our hunches and feelings and those checks of thy Spirit and those Strange, still, small voices, Lord, that tell us this is the way. Walk ye in it. All things are possible to him that believeth. I will give my angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Indeed, thou art compassed about with a very great cloud of witnesses.
time shall be no more. just don't understand. 